Hey there YouTube, today's tutorial is going to unfortunately take place within Parallels. Um, this will require a Windows installation to any Mac users out there, so very sorry about that. Let's go into full screen mode. Uh, nothing like the good old Windows XP, long before the perils of Windows Vista came along. Um, but today I'm going to be showing you how to create um, a custom PS3 boot logo and sound. So as per usual, you'll need a few resources in here. You're going to need the boot logo creator, the AsbestOS installer, any version should do, a uh, brief audio file for your audio uh, boot up thing, which should be under eight or nine seconds to avoid getting cut off at the end, um, Congenie's awesome file manager package file, Photoshop NVIDIA DTS plugin, Simply Zip, and Xvid for PSP. You'll find all this down there in the description. Bearing in mind, you may also require several .NET frameworks, which I can't be certain about depending on your OS. At this point, presumably you have everything installed. So we'll head into resources once again, and open up Boot Logo Creator. And you'll see under Boot Logos, we have several DDS files. We're going to be working on these today. So we'll head into Photoshop here and go, uh, oops, open. And we'll go Resources, Boot Logo Creator, Boot Logos. And we'll go and select the first three, that being uh, Logo, Logo Blur, and Logo Footer. You'll only need the other three if you plan to use this console on a standard Dev TV. In fact, if you don't replace the other three, you'll end up with the standard boot logo when you boot it with a standard definition cable attached. So let's go and open up those. Make sure you click load using default sizes, then hit uh, OK. OK, OK. You'll see I've got mine already created here. Um, I'll take you through how exactly these work. In the first file here, we've got um, new logo.dds. This will be the first actual uh, logo which loads in when we start our PS3. The second image here is basically a copy of the first, but with a blur modifier added. And the final one here, new logo footer. Uh, this is going to load in after the first one, before the whole thing fades out. Um, and it will load in directly on top of the first one. So if you want to put text beside the first one, make sure you don't accidentally kind of collide them. The easiest way to do this, if you want to have uh, one section of your image fade in, would be if you originally create it all in the one file, um, like we have um, the text here and remove there, and we have both of them in the same file at first, then we split them off into two separate files later, so that the text retains its position and so does the image, and that will work out quite well. Now there are three restrictions in the way this system works. The first being you can only use two colors, black and white. Areas of black will denote transparent areas of your image, which will not show up during boot time. Areas of white indicate areas which should be solid, such as your logo. The second restriction is that no part of your opaque image can make contact with the edge of the frame, either on the top, bottom or sides. If you do this, you'll end up with white lines at the top, bottom or sides of your image which I don't think would be particularly desirable. The final limitation is that you cannot change the size of your images. If you do this, your code boot file, which we'll be generating later, will not work. So with that out of the way, you've got quite a bit of freedom to create your own logo here. So let's assume we've actually finished creating our logo for today. We'll close Photoshop here. Under our boot logos, we'll go and highlight all of them, that being standard definition and high definition, and we will drag them over DDS to GTF and release. Now we have a few GTF files. So we'll head back to the root directory, boot logo creator, and run code boot creator. In the new window, we'll choose browse, and we'll navigate to our code boot unpacked, which we'll find in the boot logo creator root directory under code boot unpacked, and choose that file. We will then go and select each logo GTF file by going to root, boot logo creator, boot logos, and clicking each one individually.
Finally, under Output Cold Boot, hit Browse, go to Boot Logo Creator Root. Under Output Cold Boot, if you don't have this folder, you can create it. We will type file name Cold Boot dot RAF and click Save. Then click Start. You will be presented with uh, an incorrectly spelled success message, and at this point, we can go and close this window. For step two, we'll run simply zip, click external applications, zlib, click browse, we'll go to our desktop, resources, boot logo creator, and we will open up output cold boot, and click open, make sure compress is checked, and click start. Compression completed, we'll click OK and we can close simply zip. Finally, click step three. Select browse under compressed cold boot and click our newly created compressed cold boot file under output cold boot. Click OK. Under original cold boot, click browse. Go to root boot logo creator. Open the original cold boot folder and open the file. Under output cold boot, hit browse navigate to the root boot logo creator folder name the file cold boot and click save then click finish another incorrectly spelled message and click ok we can now close this utility now that we have our cold boot file we'll transfer this to our desktop we'll now go and run the xvid for psp in the application window hit open navigate to wherever you saved your audio file to under file type hit audio files and click your audio clip choose open under audio encoding ensure AC3 640k is selected then we'll go up to file click add task save your file as cold boot underscore stereo and click save again click file add task and name this file cold boot underscore multi and click save. Finally, click encode. Then click close on each window and close the application. We now have three files here which we will go and copy over to our memory stick. Overwrite in my case. Now we'll go connect this memory stick to our PS3 and we'll flash the files. Okay, now we have our USB stick connected to our PS3 and we have the AsbestOS and the ComGenie Awesome File Manager both installed. We'll go run AsbestOS, wait for it to install. press X button to exit. We'll then go and open ComGenie's Awesome File Manager. Press select to enter write mode and we'll go and select Dev Write Flash. We'll open the VSH folder, open the resource folder, then hit write on the D-pad. On the other side we'll open up our USB drive and we'll highlight coldboot.raf, press the circle button hit start then do the same for cold boot multi and cold boot stereo we'll now go and restart our PS3 as you can see the new logo and audio has taken effect so thank you very much for watching I hope you found this tutorial useful please do consider subscribing if you did and I'll see you next time. Live long and prosper.